Hello Bitcoin world, it's Brian here, the UK Bitcoin master, back with another video in my series, uh, Bitcoin for Beginners. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as always, please like this video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, bash the bell button so you get notified uh, when I upload new videos. And again, um, follow me across all the platforms, whether that is Twitter at UK Bitcoin Master, um, DLive, DTube, Steemit, all the platforms that I um, post this content on, you'll find me at UK Bitcoin Master. Uh, today is the 29th of October 2018, and as always, it's great to be back with you all. Before I start the show, as always, let me give you my three top tips for Bitcoin success. Number one, buy some Bitcoin, obviously. You need to register with a, an exchange, buy some Bitcoin, Coinbase, local Bitcoins, links are below to register with those, um, buy some Bitcoin. Step two, and this is a very, very important step, get it off the exchange and onto a Trezor hardware device. Again, you can get a Trezor in the link sections uh, below. Um, once you've got it onto a Trezor, um, unfortunately, the boring thing is to do absolutely nothing at all with it and just hold it and wait for the halvings to come round. I won't labour that point. Go back and look at my previous videos and you'll see what I mean. Um, by the way, in the notes sections below, you can find the link to my website that's got every video I've ever done on it. Um, there's also any links uh, pertinent, relevant to this particular show. Um, today, I want to talk about somebody that I respect immensely in the space. Um, he has got, he's been in Bitcoin for flipping neck longer than most. I've been in Bitcoin since 2017. I believe Simon might have been in Bitcoin since maybe 2011, 2012. Um, he's an Englishman uh, that lives in the Isle of Man, spends a lot of time in Hong Kong. Very, very, very successful guy um, generally in life. Uh, background as an investment banker. He wrote the Bitcoin book, um, um, Bank to the Future. Um, he's got investments in lots of cryptocurrency businesses and what he doesn't know about Bitcoin isn't worth knowing. So as I go through this particular show, I'm going to splice a little bit of video in that I actually saw, um, that I watched, um, um, that Simon did um, with a company called Crusher Street and it was absolutely fantastic. And so this video um, talks about you know, study the economics of Bitcoin. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it is understanding that Bitcoin um, was produced, um, the white paper was written in 2009, I believe, by um, an unknown male female group we don't know called Satoshi Nakamoto. The white paper was put in place so that Bitcoin was born. Um, and Bitcoin has got lots of strengths. Number one, it is immutable, which means it can't be changed, it can't be altered, it can't be rolled back. It is private, it gives you the bank in your hands or on your trezor. Um, there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins ever produced, that is set in the white paper, it can't be changed. When you understand the amount of coders that have to agree to any change on the Bitcoin blockchain, you'll understand that one person cannot go and make changes. One person, one entity, can't decide, oh, we're going to make another 21 million. It can't be done because everyone's got to agree. And if they don't, that person or entity has to fork off and try and do their own thing, which then does not become Bitcoin. So we look, if we look at the economics of Bitcoin, well, basically, there's only ever going to be 21 million. Um, by the year, I believe 20, is it 2033 or something like that? It's on the video. The link will be below the full video that you can watch. I think they talk about it. And um, if not, I certainly heard it somewhere that by something like 2033 or 2035, 99% of all the Bitcoins in the world will already be mined. OK, so at least one percent to be mined between then and something like 2141, 100 odd years from now. Now, when you consider that three or four million bitcoins have been lost or the keys have been lost or they've been thrown away on hard drives, when there's 21 million produced, 
three or four, let's say three million are lost. That leaves 18 million. When you consider that most of them are being snatched up even now by investors like me, by financial institutions quietly accumulating Bitcoin, there is not going to be a great deal of Bitcoin around for people to get hold of. And whilst today in 2018, you can buy one whole Bitcoin for around six and a half thousand dollars. Just imagine being able to only buy one Satoshi, which is a fraction of a Bitcoin for six and a half thousand dollars when Bitcoin is way out of most people's uh, reaches. Uh, uh, sorry, reach. So what I want to do, I want to run this short video for you to get an idea of what Simon's saying. So basically, instead of just listening to me all the time, take some advice from Simon Dixon. Uh, you know, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Um, I believe it's uh, Simon Dixon Twit. Um, so, you know, you can follow him there. He gets interviewed on lots of um, channels so you can see videos of him and, you know, just follow him and Simon is one of the commentators that I encourage people to follow um, in the video below that is all about who you should follow in the space to get the right information if you're going to be a Bitcoin holder. So for now, let's just run this short clip of what Simon's saying and you draw your own conclusions. But I am definitely bullish long term on Bitcoin. Well, you just you just got to look at the economics. The economics are... A lot of these Bitcoins have been lost. There's only so many of them that exist. There will never be more than 21 million. And already the demand today is way greater than the supply. And so while short term people, people might be using it for speculation and they might panic sell, there's a ginormous amount of people that are using it as savings and using it because of the, the sheer utility that having your own money and being able to transfer it to anyone in the world without any censorship provides. Sure. Um, and that u that utility is already clear. Years ago, it wasn't clear. It was all speculative. It could have been a Ponzi scheme. Um, it could have required more and more investors to come in in order to sustain the price. But the world, the, the Bitcoin we're in today is the utility has proven itself and it's no longer what I would call that speculative investment, because the, the, the demand already yeah. is enough to just drive the economics and the, f the fixed money supply. And every four years, the, you know, the, the number of Bitcoins created um, being halved until eventually there's no more Bitcoins. OK, so I hope that gave you a flavor of where I'm coming from now. As you can see from the, 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 the image that's, that was put up, you can see that on this program, you know, that's nearly an hour long, if you want to get more of what Simon talks about, you know, he talks about discovering the Bitcoin and blockchain industry. He talks about the economics of Bitcoin and why it's a long term asset. He covers, is it too late to get involved in Bitcoin? Mainstream ad um, adoption of Bitcoin. Every central bank wants their own version of Bitcoin, which, by the way, will literally be centralized. So, again, it's not Bitcoin because Bitcoin can't be changed. And in a heartbeat, a bank or a financial institution can just make changes, print more money or whatever that might be. Uh, so, you know, definitely worth... You know, if you're where I was back in 2017, gathering this information and learning about why it's important to buy and hold Bitcoin, definitely, definitely, definitely worth following Simon Dixon. Um, so he's just one of the many commentators that I follow. And as I've said in the link section, the note section below, you can find a link to that video where I promote Simon and lots of other commentators. Um, the other thing that I want to start to talk about is, you know, people say, well, Bitcoin isn't going anywhere. It's just going in a sideways market. And I guess what I want to do by putting this next image up is um, just draw your attention to the crashes in the past and what has happened. And, and as you can see here, I haven't got the dates against them, but you know, the first ones, Bitcoin is a bubble, a fad, a scam. 
you know, and it crashed to $2 from wherever it was. Then we see another crash, and then the, the next crash. Bitcoin is a bubble, a fad, a scam yet again, and then it crashes to $152. Then we see um, 2017, where Bitcoin hit 19, just under $20,000, and then it crashed back to 5.7, where it's, you know, now about um, six and a half, you know, and, you know, everyone's saying it's dead, it's going nowhere, etc. But if you actually look at these previous ones, you know, when you take the crash to $2, you know, if you'd have bought into the mainstream FUD that Bitcoin's now dead, you know, and let's say that was several years ago, where would you be today when you look at where Bitcoin is today? So if it did crash to $2 and then it crashed again to 152 and then it crashed to 5,790, where is it going to crash to next time? Maybe it's going to hit $100,000 and then crash to $50,000. So if it crashes to $50,000, don't you really want to be buying it now at six and a half thousand dollars. So that is the message that I'm trying to get out there on this particular show. Number one, follow the right commentators. Number two, that un understand that until Bitcoin is big enough where the volatility um, moves away from it, and that will come, it's volatile but it's still in an upward direction and you would be absolutely crazy not to buy yourself some Bitcoin right now, even if it's 10 quid, 20 quid, 100 quid or dollars or euros or whatever you deal in, get some now and accumulate a little bit each month because honestly, it is going to grow and it's going to grow and it's going to grow, but it is going to suffer crashes on the way, but it will never crash back to the time it crashed before. As you can see from the chart, when it talks of $2, then it went up and it crashed back to $152. Then it crashed back to 5,790, and it will crash back to 20,000, 50,000, or even 100,000 as the next two, five, 10 years um, passes. So guys, get some Bitcoin now. Get it off, whatever you do, off an exchange and onto a trezor, and then hold it, wait it out, watch some more of these crashes happen, and I'll tell you something, you'll be in a pretty good place in a decade's time from now. So again, that's the show, guys. Do follow me on Twitter, at UK Bitcoin Master. Um, if you're watching this video on Steemit, do give us a, an upvote and a re-steam. I'd greatly appreciate it. YouTube, um, give us a like um, on DLive, DTube, BitTube, you know, give us a, a support in some way or another, I'd really appreciate it. Follow me across those platforms. Do like this video, share it as always, subscribe to the channel. And um, until the next video, have yourself a fantastic Bitcoin day and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.